uh, very good morning to everybody. Uh, today is World Animals Day. We celebrate it. And uh, for us, uh, it's a matter of pride uh, that uh, I'm uh, fortunate to introduce uh, Dr. S.K. Gupta, who happened to be my PhD supervisor at National Institute of Immunology. So it's a great sense of pleasure. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Sir Dr. S.K. Gupta uh, for today's uh, World Animal Day lecture. So I will just uh, do the honor for formal introduction. Many of us know you, sir, here. Uh, people know, uh, they are aware about you. And uh, so uh, he did his uh, PhD from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi in 1983, and uh, served uh, uh, at National Institute of uh, Immunology uh, since 1982 in various uh, scientific positions. He was also a director of uh, uh, ILS Bhubaneswar for, uh, for, for some time. He superannuated from uh, NII and uh, now uh, and he served for some more time as a Jesse Bose fellow and uh, emeritus scientist over there. And now currently he is working as uh, ICMR emeritus scientist at ICMR headquarters. In addition, he is also a president of the International Society for Immunology of Reproduction. Uh, sorry, International Society for Immunology of Reproduction, which is ICIR. So it's a great, uh, like uh, from India, I guess, uh, representing to such a uh, big international society is a great honor. And sir is heading that uh, that society right now. Uh, uh, his area of specialization includes reproductive biology, immunology, cell biology, immunodiagnostics, and vaccines. He is in, in a career spanning nearly four decades. Uh, he made pioneering contributions in understanding the Jonah Pellucida based uh, Jonah Pellucida biology, you can say, and on the basis of that, he uh, uh, proposed uh, several vaccine candidates that can be used for humans as well as for animal, animals. But uh, there were several uh, challenges associated with humans, but uh, he was uh, one who made significant contributions in uh, animal contraception and specifically for he uh, did uh, lots of challenge studies in dogs. Maybe he will be speaking about those things. Uh, about the contraceptive vaccines he has been uh, working on uh, for uh, control of the wildlife population across the world and uh, also for a street dog population in country country for uh, so that we can control rabies that is important for uh, for uh, human welfare as well as for the animals as well he is fellow of the four national science academies including national academy of medical sciences india he uh, uh, he received several uh, accolades in his uh, career, uh, including Santi Sarup Bhadnagar Awards, uh, uh, then uh, Tata Innovation Fellowship, Jesse Bose Fellowship, uh, Ranbaxi Research Awards in Medical Sciences uh, from uh, Ranbaxi Science Foundation, Lifetime Achievement Award from ISSRF, uh, Haryana Vigyan Ratna Awards from Haryana State Council of Science and Technology. He has more than 280 publications and uh, he uh, hold eight Indian patents, two international patents and eight technology transfers on his name. So uh, without wasting time, I request uh, sir to deliver today's talk. So we will be looking forward to hear you, sir. Thank you. at the outset i would like to thank Dr. Taru Sharma, who was kind enough to invite me to speak on such an important day. Uh, we have been working in animal, to some extent in animal sciences, so I do not know how much I, I will fit into today's uh, uh, occasion, but I will try my best to do justice. Uh, 
at the same time i would like to thank suman for giving such a detailed description of my uh, introduction thank you suman so we will start uh, the talk without spending more time on it and today what i would like to speak on the various fertility control methods and i will like to describe some of our work and later on give few examples uh, which are going on within the globe in order to achieve uh, this uh, uh, whole uh, exercise basically the whole purpose is to mitigate uh, the uh, human wildlife conflict which has increasingly now become a big problem in many countries including india because of the increasing human populations and because of urbanizations and so on so forth so the wildlife also need a space to survive and that is why there is a increase in the uh, these conflict and i will give you some examples of that now when we look at the animal uh, and especially i think your uh, institute uh, in the perspective now there are two major problems we face one is that there is a uh, extinction of some species and that there, there, there is therefore there is a need to conserve some of these species and there are a lot of efforts going on how to conserve these species which are now on the verge of extinction because of the uh, uh, whole evolution and economic development which is going on in the world but at the same time there is also another problem which is uh, uh, that there is a increase in the population of some of the wild animals including domestic animals and this is also becoming a huge problem which may vary from country to country and i will also elude on that point because that each country has to address it in a different fashion and uh, another important dimension which is perhaps important for this institute is that the animals also act as a vector or reservoir for various disease which we call as zoonotic disease and in fact uh, to the recent data suggests that 70% of the human infection are of zoonotic in nature so you can understand that how important it is to keep the health of the animals also uh, in, in check otherwise they will lead to the spread of these infections to the human being and of course there are many disease uh, if you go to there are many sites uh, they will list you all these different diseases but we became more interested in rabies from the perspective of uh, street dog population which is again a big issue in our country now uh, what are the problems in a indian situation in indian situation there is a problem especially in the southern part of the country increasing population of elephants and you hear now and then in the news that there are increasing elephant human conflict and many human dies uh, every year uh, and there is a problem of wild boar there is a problem of street dogs uh, neil gai is again a big issue in the central part of the country including no northern part of the country and the neil gai lead to crop damage of the farmers through the tunes of several crores of rupees where state government has to compensate the farmers uh, for the crop losses and uh, then there is a problem of monkey which you know that there are it's a big big problem now and in fact many states though we we when we started this work i will give you one or two slides uh, we did not pursue this work because of the religious sentiment but now you will be surprised to know that even the most religious states have declared monkey as a vermin so it means that you can capture them and you can shoot and you you uh, the enforcement will not be able to catch so now because th this this has again become a big problem and perhaps for you, this institute uh, concern is the problem of uh, bulls and stray bulls again has become a problem which leads to increase in the uh, human animal uh, conflict now what are the how what are the different methods by which you can control that now one of the most common method which which people have used is translocation so where 
there are a high density of these animals you move to a low density uh, uh, area and perhaps that may mitigate this uh, human animal conflict but over the years people have shown that it has not worked and it has a good example of shifting the monkeys from delhi to asola and it did not work and there were a lot of articles in the newspaper in spite of spending the huge amount of money and there is again another good example from uk to reduce the tuberculosis in uh, bedgar they uh, did the translocation and it did not work because the new animals will move in and in fact the tuberculosis incidence in these animals increased rather than decreasing and that is why they stopped this whole process of translocation now culling is another example that you allow the culling of the animal or trapping them and shooting these animals now this is still being followed in some countries in a particular season but by and large most of the countries have uh, stopped culling of the animal i i recently read last week that now perhaps the government is thinking of capturing the street dogs and uh, culling them but then I, we do not know how much of uh, reactions will come from animal lovers but the government is thinking of contemplating that but still this is also not uh, accepted ethically by many of the societies in the world the third is the uh, surgical sterilization now surgical sterilization is still accepted by most of the people in many countries but then the problem with surgical sterilization is that it is expensive and uh, the uh, other problem is that it is a very inefficient process in the sense that in the in our country the sterilization of street dog is there in existence for last several years but somehow it has not been able to control the population of street dogs so it is expensive somehow it seems to be inefficient process another example i can give you is of the control of the monkey population in himachal pradesh where they have devised a very simple sterilization uh, protocol it's about 5 minutes sterilization pro, uh, pro, uh, protocol for both male and female monkeys by electrocution uh, thermal electrocution uh, but even himachal pradesh they have not been able to reduce the monkey problem and the the people who have been involved in this whole program they themselves are saying that they are looking for alternate methods how to control monkey pro, uh, problem in uh, himachal pradesh in fact it becomes one of the election uh, 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 point also for both uh, ruling party as, as well as the opposition party that who will be able to control the monkey population in himachal pradesh now the other method is a hormonal contraception hormonal contraception is good people have used uh, synthetic progestins and people have used gnrh agonist as a hormonal contraceptive the major problem is its frequent intake and it is expensive but however people have now come uh, with the uh, implant so that a single implant can give you uh, inhibition of fertility for about 2 to 3 years and in some countries it is being practiced especially in australia to control the population of kangaroo this is one of the option where they use synthetic uh, progestin as one of the options to control urban kangaroo population in urban uh, states the uh, next one is a chemical sterilization which is uh, which has been now used uh, as uh, one of the option and i will perhaps come to this in my last or uh, second last slide that it is used now to control the pigeon population pigeon population is working, becoming again a major issue in many of the tourist sites when you go in this our own country then they they become uh, a, a great uh, problem but for today's talk uh, what i would like to do is i will like to focus on contraceptive vaccine now our institute historically started with contraceptive vaccine of course for the human population control which i am not talking about now the the why uh, what are the advantages of contraceptive vaccine one is that it's a herd immunization approach for wildlife population control mean that if you immunize 100 animals it is not 
possible that it will lead to uh, protection in all the hundred. But at least a major part, if your efficacy of the vaccine is 60% or 70%, at least 60 to 70% animals will not conceive. So it's a basically a herd immunization approach, whereas in the case of human, you need a vaccine which should have 98 to 100% efficacy, which we still do not have even today. And none of the vaccine has that kind of efficacy of 80 to 100%. Now, the vaccines are safe. It has been tested. It has been used in humans. It has been also used in veterinary sciences. Large-scale production is feasible. Vaccine delivery systems exist in most of the country, whether it is for the human or for, for the animal. And it is accepted by the society by and large. Now, what are the options for us to control or to develop vaccines for fertility control? If we look at the whole reproductive process, there are three major points where the vaccines have been worked to develop contraception. There are other options also which uh, people have worked, but I will not go into the detail of those, uh, those for uh, limited time available to me. Uh, one is the DNRH-based vaccine, and this will allow Product, no production of sperm or egg, and thereby leading to infertility in the uh, animal, because it will sh uh, shut off the production of LH and FH. The other option is to inhibit the sperm-egg interaction, and the people have worked on sperm-based protein, people have worked on the egg-based protein, and which is primarily Jonah pellucida, but then there are other approaches which are also being tested with respect to the egg-based protein. And then some people have worked on post-fertilization events like one of the famous vaccines for human contraception based on human chorionegonadotrophin. Now, I will restrict most of my talk with the gonopalucida-based vaccine and then also give you in between some examples of GNRH-based uh, vaccine. Now, why Zona pellucida? Now, if you look at any mammalian egg, all the mammalian eggs are founded by a translucent matrix. This is the matrix which, which is known as Zona pellucida. And if you look under the electron microscope, you will find that it is made up of a simple, thin uh, filament-like structures which are in, uh, uh, connected with each other. Now, why this is so important? This is important because it is responsible for binding of the sperm, induction of acrosome reaction, and then subsequently penetration of the sperm through the matrix leading to the fusion and post-fusion uh, uh, event, which will lead to block in polysperming. So it has an important function in the process of fertilization. So people thought that if we make antibodies against Zona pellucida, it will inhibit this whole process of fertilization. And thereby, it will lead to block in fertility. That was the simple uh, thought process. So they started with that concept. But then before we start that concept, then one has to also look a little bit on the biology of the zona pellucida. And I will just give you only one example. By and large, in all the mammals, the zona pellucida matrix is made up of either three or four glycoproteins. And depending upon what species you want to target, you should know that, that information. For example, in the case of mouse, it is made up of ZP1, ZP2, and ZP3. Whereas in the case of porcine, bovine, and canine, you do not have ZP1, but instead of ZP1, you have ZP4. Whereas in the human, you have all the four. So you have to be a little bit careful that which species you want to work on, of course, if there are some common denominators that ZP3 and ZP2 are the common denominators which are present in most of the, the species. And these are fairly large glycoproteins. These are all, all glycoproteins, and they are fairly large. For example, the smallest one is ZP3, which is about 424 amino acid, and the longest one is ZP2, which is about 745 amino acid long. And top of it, they are glycosylated. So I will start, give you now, come to my uh, uh, main uh, experiment which we have done. The first experiment we are, did is to ask the question, if you purify the between from the native source and immunize the animals, will it lead to block infertility or not? 
so this started with the the my first phd student because by that time people have been able to optimize the process to purify zpt using uh, chromatography approaches from the four and for this the most common model used was post sign a the reason why we use the post sign is that there is a good accessibility of the post sign act from abetor at least in the western country in india unfortunately we do not have still uh, organized mechanized uh, abetor from where you can outsource the ovary and second thing is that if you generate antibody against the post sign they do cross react with the zona pellucida of other species including human and that was the concept people started in the initial stages uh working on the porcine zona pellucida glycoprotein and in, even till today there are vaccines which are commercially available based on the porcine gene so our first experiment was to check whether if we immunize the monkey for example the bonnet monkey with porcine gp3 will it lead to block infertility so this was first experiment which we published in 1994 in uh, uh, journal of reproduction and fertility now known as journal of uh, known as reproduction and what what we basically showed in this uh, uh, paper is that we could in him and we used to approach it at that time scg was a very important project for institute so we immunized with gp3 with we immunized with gp3 beta scg conjugate to cut the whole story short what we showed for the first time that if you immunize with porcine gp3 you can inhibit fertility in these animals and if you do not give booster and the 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 the, the antibody titers decline the animals regain fertility and at that time the major drawback of the porcine gp to use for the human vaccination approach was that it leads to ophritis ophritis mean that it leads to inhibition of follicle growth and to also to some extent hormonal disturbances and that is why people thought that it will not be used for the human purposes and i will not go into the details that we did lot of experiment in order to dissect out the epitopes of the zona protein which can be used as candidate for controlling or inhibiting fertility or inhibiting human human form that binding and thereby it will not lead to ophritis because most of this ophritis was due to the ophritogenic t cell epitope so you segregate b cell epitope from t cell epitope but anyway i will not go into the detail of those what I, here i have shown is the um, uh, the pictures uh, of the uh, ovary and you can see that uh you, you you the the follicle growing follicles in all this ovary uh, which suggested that yes there was a proper uh, ovulation going on in the immunized animal so there was no folliculogenesis which were observed in these monkey when we used the purified highly purified gp3 and this is the histology of the monkey you can see the fine uh, egg in the control and similarly when you immunize with the native gp3 you can see all the primordial follicles which are present there so it did not lead to any disturbances uh, so it did generate some hope for us that it can still be used for the human but then uh, native protein you cannot really obtain you you will always you cannot obtain them in a large amount second will be that there will always be a possibility that there may be some contamination of other ovarian associated protein however best your purification protocols are so then we thought that let us use the recombinant protein that will at least avoid the contamination of other ovarian associated protein and then we went into the whole process of our group over the years uh, where we uh, made the recombinant protein of bonnet monkey Uh, zona protein we made canine we also made porcine and then studied all of these in order to evaluate their contraceptive potential now this is one of the pictures which i have taken that the the bonnet monkey of course we have to struggle quite a bit in order to get these monkeys into a pure form 
uh, uh, so that they, they, they are no degradation graded product and you get a single uh, band in, uh, which is about at least 90 to 95 percent of the recombinant protein corresponding to the full length uh, uh, protein. Now, the first experiment we did when these uh, recombinant proteins, huh, please, any, you can uh, ask in between also, uh, that will be fine. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The blood testing barrier is weak, but blood uh, ovarian barrier is not there. No. So, when these antibodies are formed, so these antibodies are formed, the 1% which must occur to their heads. Mm -hmm. Is, is it going to because blood has access to ovary? Is it going to ovary and acting there, or it is preventing fertilization in the ovary? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say that what uh, Doctor Savir has said is absolutely correct. That there is no blood ovarian uh, barrier. You can see the antibody in the ovarian follicles. Now, the vaccine works in two ways, the zona-based vaccine. One is that they can also inhibit ovulation because what will happen is that they will uh, try to destroy the secondary and tertiary follicle or enter follicle. And uh, some people say that the primordial follicles are scared because I'm not going into the kinetic or the expression of donor proteins through the process of polyclogenesis, but let's say that the primordial follicles are spare, and then subsequently over the years they will grow, and then the animals will regain the uh, fertility. The second mechanism is that they may also be acting at the sperm egg level. So both the mechanisms will work, uh, and the, the, the both of the mechanisms perhaps work in an in vivo system, that they reduce the ovulation process, they also uh, inhibit fertilization. So it works on both levels. Yeah. What's the title has come down? Yes. Is this monkey or any animal is sensitized for making GP3 or 4 antibodies? When the blood flow is going inside the ovaries, now it is seeing the GP3 or 4 mm -hmm. on the surface of mercury and suicide. Mm -hmm. Do you think that whether it is a basal uh, antibody constantly there from the yeah. So, what you are saying is that can the native protein which is present in the system will act as an antigen and boost the antibody response once the antibody titer goes? And yeah, and that, that's the question uh, I think which has been adequately addressed. Uh, in the sense that even our uh, baboon experiment showed that when the antibody titers go down, then there, we do not see that they are going up. Now, they go down to the extent that our ELISA system will not be able to detect them. But it, you cannot rule out that they, they may be completely out because it depends on the sensitivity of your acid system, number one. Now, <clears throat> number two is that... Uh, that most of these experiments which have been done, which I will show you toward the end, they have been done for almost now 15 years and 20 years, some of the experiments. And they, they, these animals have been followed throughout very carefully, all these actively immunized animals. And they have seen that you, in some cases you require annual booster, in some cases you require only two primary injections and one annual booster, and after that, the fertility, infertility is maintained for about five to seven years. And it will vary from individual animals to individual animals. The advantage of DP as compared to the GNRH-based vaccine is that even if the animal is pregnant and you give the ZP-based vaccine, it will not have any adverse consequence on the pregnancy of the animal. Whereas in with the GNRH-based vaccine, if you are 
implantation or your subsequent development of embryo is based on or dependent on LH, it will lead to abortion. So that's the that is the difference you have to keep in mind. Okay. So this this particular experiment was very encouraging. Uh, uh, where we what basically it is showing is the sexual pattern. The, these are the progesterone profile, basically telling the cyclicity profile. These are antibody titers. Now, in order to make these proteins immunogenic, we have to provide a carrier health. So we have conjugated them with diphtheria toxide in this case. And you see that the, there are antibody titers shown against the, re, uh, the recombinant protein as well as diphtheria toxide. Now, that is to cut the whole story short, what we showed that you can achieve infertility for various period of time. These are the number of cycles when we did the mating and they did not become pregnant. Whereas these are the control, they became pregnant, they delivered, one aborted. And in this, these baboons, when the animal titer went down, they became pregnant. So this was the thing which we were expecting and we, we, it was very uh, encouraging for us that look, we have come to a stage where it can be used because it's a reversible block in fertility. But when we did the next experiment, and this next experiment is in the homologous species. That is, we had the recombinant bonnet monkey and we immunized the recombinant, uh, the female bonnet monkey, not the baboon. And in recombinant, uh, this, in the immunized bonnet monkey, we again got the cyclicity except the summer amino, aminoria period. We got good antibody titer, but of course we have to give number of boosters in order to maintain the antibody titer. And when we stopped giving the boosters, to our surprise, we did not find any regain of fertility. Even up to one year, we waited. So then we, we, then we wonder what is going on. In baboons, we got it. In bonnet monkey, we have not got it. And this is the question which people have asked about beta STG vaccine to Dr. Sarwar, that you immunize with a self-antigen. What will be its consequences? And this was perhaps one of the primate, non-human primate model we established first time where you immunize with the primate protein, same species protein, and then you ask the questions, what will be the adverse consequences of that? And what we found here is that there is atresia in the follicles. ZP looked very ecstatic, and there was overall follicular atresia. So in baboon, we got reversible block in fertility, whereas in monkey, the bonnet monkey in a homologous animal model, we did not get. So at that stage, we decided that let's move out of the human story. We are not interested in the human story. Of course, we continued with the human story from the basic point of view of delineating the B cell epitope from the T cell epitope. We made antibodies against all the recombinant human zona protein. We had all the recombinant home human zona protein for this particular aspect. Uh, but from the point of view of contraceptive vaccine, I, I think I, I, I will not discuss that uh, any anymore. Now, we thought that if, if this vaccine is able to inhibit fertility, even if it's an irreversible block of fertility, in fact, that is desirable in many wildlife species. In fact, the target for wildlife species is the other way around. The major challenge for us is to develop a single shot vaccine which leads to lifelong infertility, which is a very, very difficult question to address and find a scientific solution. People are trying that, but that is the situation one wants in wildlife. That you give one injection, it leads to life, life, lifelong fertility, at least for the reproductive age of that animal. If that reproductive age is five years or 10 years, whatever that age is. Now we moved on to, say, we thought that, okay, why don't we take stray dog as a population, uh, as a control measure for this? And when we have put so much of energy and so much of time into this whole program, why don't we look at this? Maybe this may have some utility. And this is mainly because it's a big problem. About 55,000 people die because of rabies in, across the world. And in India, about 20,000 people die of the rabies. So, uh, and whatever the current, I did mention that the current 
control measure, which is catch, neuter, and vaccinate and release again, has not worked very efficiently in the Indian system. And we still do not see any decrease in these, their population in major cities of India. So this is the first experiment we did. Now, we also thought in the process that perhaps immunization with the porcine or, in, or immunization with the bonnet monkey may not be good in the street dog. Why don't we make recombinant canine zona protein and do the experiment with the canine zona protein? So we expressed the canine GP2 and canine GP3 and then did this first experiment with the help of Central Military Veterinary Lab, which had dog colony, we did, NIA did not have any dog colony. So these experiments were done in their facility. And you will see that when we immunize with the recombinant DP3, the, 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 uh, sorry, this is, this is the recombinant DP3. There was, at least in three animals, failed to get, uh, become pregnant, only one became pregnant, which has low antibody type. Whereas all the animals which were immunized with GP2 became pregnant, the animals which were immunized with the carrier, the stereotopite, they also became pregnant. So this gave us the clue that GP3 perhaps will be one of the best candidates to work on further. And that is what, that is how we continued working with this. And, <clears throat> but at this initial stages, we had the recombinant GP3. We have to do chemical conjugation with carrier protein. We thought that there is no point of doing this. This will not be a practical proposition. If you go at the large scale level, doing chemical conjugation with a consistent property will not be achievable. So let us make a genetic fusion. So we put the carrier protein within the recombinant protein. And instead of taking the full length, uh, uh, I may have to move faster. So we, we have to, uh, rather than taking diphtheria tox, uh, to, uh, toxin, we took tetanus toxin and we took only T cell epitope. So we remove all the B cell epitope. The property of these T cell epitope are they are promised of T cell epitope. They can bind to various MHC molecules. And then we made recombinant protein. Uh, and uh, we also, keeping in view of the regulatory processes, which I am again not going into the uh, detail, they did not allow us to use histid intact as a uh, method to purify. They said, you have, we do not want any hist tag. So we developed a protocol of expressing the protein without his tag and purifying them and grow them in a fermenter so that you can uh, grow them in a fermenter. And these experiments were held by Dr. Amulya Panda uh, as a collaborator. And we generated the antibody and with the, uh, uh, the mouse egg. They also reacted with the dog uh, zona pellucida. And we showed that in the case of uh, mice, when you immunize the mice, you can uh, achieve about 90% inhibition in fertility. So 90% of the uh, female uh, mice when immunized with this recombinant uh, canine GP3 did not conceive and there was also a significant decrease in the number of soft bonds from 8.4 to 0.6. Now, uh, at, at the same time, because there was a requirement from United States and the Human Society of Washington approached us. They said, why don't you make recombinant porcine GP3 and GP4 for us? Because they were using native protein and they are not able to meet the requirement of their country to produce enough vaccine. So the idea was that you make recombinant porcine GP. So the primary injections will be given with the native and the booster will be given with recombinant so that you can cover the large number of animals uh, in that. Uh, uh, that way. And that is how we went ahead and then uh, clone uh, the porcine GP3 and GP4. And uh, then we again use the T cell epitope in one case, tetanus toxide, in case another case, boin RNA T cell epitope. And we showed in the mouse that yes, with the GP3, you can have maximum inhibition of fertility. With uh, GP4, we got only 50% because 
mouse do not have GP4, they have only GP1. And there is a about 42% sequence similarity between GP1 and GP4. And that is the reason why we got lower uh, inhibition of fertility. And this was an interesting experiment to show that whether the boosting the primary immunization with the native uh, protein followed by boosting with the recombinant will work. And we demonstrated that, yes, it worked very well. So if you immunize, this is the no uh, primary immunization with the native protein and followed by the recombinant protein. This is primed with native protein and boosted with the recombinant protein. You can see that it worked very well. And then we did some experiment in collaboration with South Africa in the hostess. Use, they used both these recombinant proteins to ask the question whether they will be able to inhibit the experiment, uh, inhibit the fertility in these animals. I will not go into the details, but then it did show that the recombinant protein to some extent can inhibit fertility, not to the same extent as the native porcine GP3. And we, these experiments were done at single dose. So one has to perhaps optimize the doses of the recombinant protein. Now I will take two examples here. One is what are the strategies to improve contraceptive uh, efficacy and then delivery platform for single dose lactin delivery system. Now, the first question we ask is that we are getting about 60 to 80% or sometimes 90% inhibition of fertility. Is it possible to get 100% decrease in fertility? And the simple question is that we ask is that if you make a vaccine which works in female as, as well as male, and at the field level, you immunize both male and female without any discrimination, and then they will subsequently mate themselves, then what will be the effect on fertility? That was the question which we tried to address in this particular experiment. And we immunize one of the sperm protein, uh, which is SP17, which inhibits fertility partly in the female and partly in the male. And both male and female were immunized. And when these co-immunized animals were mated together, we could achieve 100% decrease in fertility. So we showed for the first time that, yes, it is possible to achieve 100% inhibition of fertility, provided your vaccine works for both male and female. So this kind of experiment, no one has done. And uh, if you and these animals in the field level will mate themselves, so there will be no distinction between who is immunized, who is not immunized at the wildlife population level. Now, next example I will give you is which one? SP17 is a sperm exosome. No, it's the same immunization to do. We have we have followed in all our mice three injection to do until next I will come to the approach of single immunization. Three injection to do at four week interval. And then followed by mating on day 52 or something like that. 56. Three injection to do everywhere. And that's the question I will address later on. Now we know that in the literature, there are vaccines based on GNRH, and there are six commercial vaccines currently available based on GNRH. But no one asked this question. Is it possible that we married the VP and GNRH together into a one vaccine? And what will be its consequences? Most of the paper will either test GNRH or pro uh, ZP based vaccine, and then they will say this is better, that is better, and so on. So, so we ask if will a contraceptive vaccine encompassing both GP3 and GNRH lead to higher contraceptive efficacy? This was a simple question we addressed. And we made a design of a construct which basically has T cell epitope, dilysin linker, dog GP3. Here we have not used the full length. We have used only that part of the dog CP3, which has a receptor for sperm binding. And then followed by a triglycine spacer, again T cell epitope, and two copies of GNI, uh, again separated by a T cell epitope of uh, malaria parasite. And we express this protein, we showed that uh, both these epitopes are recognized 
in western blot independently by using monoclonal antibody against cp3 or a monoclonal antibodies against gni so both epitopes are in the purified protein are being accessible to the uh, recombinant protein and when we immunize the mice with this we could achieve 90% inhibition of fertility with a very low dose of 25 microgram per injection so it it means that it is perhaps giving an uh, advantage if you uh, have both the components in the same vaccine then we wanted to now uh, uh, test that in the beagle dog which is the our dog is our target antigen these experiments are in the mice so far and this is what we did uh, with the help of tanwas uh, chennai and the experiments were done in uh, hyderabad uh, in palamur uh, facility and we uh, have immunized four animals per group uh, one with alum one with this fusion protein one with a physical mixture of both porcine gp3 and gp4 and the recombinant protein was 500 microgram per injection and we have never used so far any of the uh, oil based adjuvant we have used mostly the alum in most of our experiments and again here it was used in the alum and what we show is that there was a uh, generation of antibody response against the recombinant protein dog gp3 gnrs there was also antibodies generated against gnrs alone there was also antibodies generated against uh, uh, the uh, uh, gp3c terminal peptide which we tested there and then in case of uh, porcine antibodies were generated against porcine gp3 against porcine gp4 and these antibodies when we tested by indirect immunofluorescence they did recognize the uh, dog zona protein whether the antibodies were generated against the fusion protein or a physical mixture of porcine gp3 and gp4 and this is the most crucial experiment for us it's about one and a half year experiment and what i have shown here is that these are the adjuvant controls and during the whole immunization protocol nine matings were done which are shown in this scale out of nine seven resulted in pregnancy two did not result in pregnancy this did not result in pregnancy this did not so out of nine matings seven two result did not result in pregnancy there were seven pregnancies with whereas in dog cp3 only eight matings were done only two resulted in pregnancy six did not result in pregnancy whereas somehow we were did not get that promising result with porcine uh, which is again summarized in this slide so with alum out of 97 became pregnant this was in number of uh, pups which were born in the dog cp3 out of 8 only two were born there were only two pups born uh, of course there were some still born pups in all the category which we have not counted and the porcine gp3 and gp4 for there was some some reduction as compared to the control but this gave us the best result which we just recently published uh, this year on day so this is a promising lead and if any one of you because i have now super animated as pankaj has told if anyone wants to take some of these leads forward you are most welcome uh we we are ready to uh, give it to you now this is two three slides on single injection because when you go at the field level giving three injections is very difficult even two injections are difficult so people are whether asking the question whether a single injections will lead to uh infertility for say about 3 to 5 years and this, these are the first example which came is uh, using liposomes they showed that in bay seal with single injection they can receive infertility for 5 years this was published uh, by brown uh, long time back and recently and uh, not that recently but they also showed that a single injection of dnrs based vaccine can lead to 2 to 5 year of infertility in white tailed deer 
Now we have used, along with Dr. Panda, who has been working on this as a delivery system, uh, we have worked on the uh, PLA-based uh, biodegradable system, and we incorporated our recombinant protein into these microspheal particles, analyzed the particle size, studied the release uh, 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 profile of the recombinant protein from these profiles. The basic idea is that the particles will release the antigen slowly and they itself will act as a booster. So you need not to give multiple boosters. Now to cut the whole story short, because I'm running late, what we have showed is that if you take immunize the animals with the microparticle, along with some soluble protein, with alum as an adjuvant, you can, a single injection can give you a inhibition of fertility of the ab about 62 days. And we could see in fertility up to 150 days. You can even see fertility at 42 days, up to 72 days, which is the longest we have studied in mice. <clears throat> you can still see that these mice are infertile by single injection. These are mouse experiments. Now, there are three zona based contraceptive vaccines which are commercially available. Now, this was the first experiment. Now, I am going back to the literature uh, analysis. This was the first experiment that PJP can uh, work. This was supported by NIH. And this is a long, very long experiment which was done in order to control the population of wild horses in Esetege, Iceland, in the United States. And this is the way the population of horses was growing up. And at that time, they introduced this PJP vaccine. It was two boosters followed by annual booster. And then you can see that the, the population started declining. Now, this experiment has been done now uh, uh, and followed up. Each and every horse has been immunized and have been tagged, and they are following this. Now they want their number has been reached to a sustainable level without any damage to the ecology and without any damage to the forest. So that is how this whole approach has been able to use. So basically, if we look at the track record of the porcine GP based vaccine, they have been used in white-tailed deer population management somewhere in the New York area. And they have also been used for the feral horses. They have also been used for the control of population of burros, which is uh, wild ass, jo gada, jo hota. and they have been also used in South Africa for controlling the population of African elephants. So these are ongoing practical propositions. And now what they do is they do not immunize these animals by capturing. They use dart gun approach. They immunize these animals by using dart gun. What is the new development which is taking place in this, this area? One of this, this, this new development is they have developed now RFID chip, which can identify the animals. This chip also record the uh, temperature of the animal, and thereby you can also identify whether the animal is suffering from disease or it, it is going to ovulate and so on and so forth. And it's a solar, solar driven satellite communication system which they have developed. So you can also store vaccine with temperature control in remote area. Uh, the data for facial recognition technology has been built in in the chip. So you can identify each and every animal sitting from one office. Uh, and it, it is also possible to deliver the night time. You can immunize during the night time with the dart when they come for some feeding or some taking rest or somewhere. So this is the new development which has just happened in the last two years. Now studies have been also initiated in South Africa to control population of baboons and monkeys. And for this, what they are trying to use is they are not using the classical injection schedule but they are using oral bait and they are designing some specific uh, uh, boat delivery devices which will be placed at a certain density in the, in the forest so that the monkey comes and he eats the baits and thereby gets actively immunized. 
So this is at the initial uh, stages of the development. Uh, and if it happens, I think it will be a very good lesson for a Indian uh, uh, situation. <clears throat> now, based on the recombinant protein cosine GP3 and GP4 and the initial experiment we did in South Africa in collaboration, they themselves, based on our publication, made the, these recombinant protein and they initially immunized the Caribbean donkey, which has been published about two years back. And they showed that in donkeys, it leads to 100% inhibition of heart rhythm. So again, you have to see that in beagle dogs, it did not give us that result. But in donkeys, it has given us 100% inhibition of heart rhythm. The same recombinant protein. Now, coming to GnRH-based vaccine, uh, the uh, gonacon has been tested. Now, this has been tested in various animal species, uh, like, for example, the field living feral cattle in Hong Kong. This experiment is going on. Uh, primary injections followed by one booster led to decrease in fertility during four years follow up. Uh, a second booster administered two to three years after the first vaccine rendered 100% of these stray cattle infertile for another year at least for which they have analyzed the data. The urban kangaroo population in Australia is being also studied by gonacon administration. And this is the implant, which I mentioned, of synthetic progestin, which they are also using. So they are using both these methods. The immunization studies in wild boar uh, in Spain has also given very promising results with the, uh, based on the gonacon uh, vaccine, which is a GnRH-based vaccine. Uh, there has been study done in the uh, uh, population management of hippopotamus. Now, hippopotamus has become a big problem in Colombia. In fact, it was in 1980, uh, 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 one of the major drug uh, dealers that uh, Pablo Estrada smuggled four uh, pubs into that country. And after his death, the number has increased so much that they are creating a lot of ecological imbalance in that country. And it has also become a tourist attraction for Colombia. So it's a mixed reaction. At the same time, they are leading to a lot of ecological damage. But for public and for some of the entrepreneurs, it is a tourist attraction. But the state government want to now control their population. And uh, last year, uh, this whole experiment has been initiated, where they are going to evaluate the GnRH based vaccine to control the population of hippopotamus. Now, I will give you two more examples. I think I'm not going to, I'm almost close to the end of my talk. The gray squirrel. So you can imagine, you know, open your imagination system. I, to me also, it was a surprise that how you will control the squirrel population by using immunocontraception. Now, this gray squirrel population in UK has become a big issue. Now, this gray population, uh, gray squirrel is an alien species. It was not a native species of it. Native species is a red squirrel. And the number has grown so much, and they create so much of damage to the forest, commercial forest to bark stripping, which lead to a 37 million pound uh, damage to the state. They also become threat to the red squirrel, and they are almost to the extinction. About now, people, according to one estimate, there are about 400 or 500 dead squirrels left in UK. Most of these are gray squirrels, which are the alien species. So uh, people have been using trapping and culling of this approach, but now they have started oral contraceptive. The, uh, most of the managers, forest managers, and the public and the farmers, they said uh, this has not led to a significant improvement. So let us start oral contraceptive. Now, oral contraceptive have been initiated. These studies have been initiated uh, by one of the major institutes, Roslyn Institute in Edinburgh. And what they are trying to do is they are designing special hopper where they will put these baits. They have already done the mapping by ca using cameras, et cetera. How many times six squirrel will come and eat the bait? How many baits will be consumed? So they count every week the, how many baits have been consumed by these squirrels and so on and so forth. And this, they feel, will lead to inhibition of uh, their, in their population 
over the years and this will take much shorter span of time as compared to uh, um, trapping and culling uh, that kind of an analysis or mathematical modeling they have been able to do that the fertility control measure will be able to uh, control the population of gray squirrel in the next 10 years if we succeed in these uh, experiments now the last example i will give you is oxygen and this is one of the chemical uh, swelling um, this is uh, most of you know that why it is important to control the population of prison of course for religious purposes india still give uh, many people you will see that they will be feeding prison every day in the morning before they have their own breakfast uh, so uh, i'm not going to touch on that but then they do lead to a lot of problems like fouling, disease transmission, defaced and accelerated deterioration of building, rock gutters and downpipe and they die, uh, potential slipping hazard on payment and so on and so forth. Now, the people have been using netting, people have been using spikes and gels. Even in my housing society, many flats have put the netting uh, in their balconies so that the prisons do not come inside. So this was one of the uh, initial study, the over-control pea, which contains 0.5% of nickel, nickel basine treated weights. This was initially developed, discovered in 1950 by Merck Laboratory. And then they, uh, this, this particular pr product is made by Enolytic USA, which is known as over-control pea. It is registered. It has been used uh, now. They need only 10 ppm of this chemical to inhibit egg hatching. So it basically acts by inhibiting the egg hatching from the egg which is then uh, lay down and thereby gradually decrease the population of pig. And this approach has been now tested in many European countries, uh, including Florence, uh, Florence, Geneva, Barcelona, Valencia, and Brussels, etc. And where they have been able to reduce the control of uh, pigeon population because they were uh, defacing many of those historical buildings and became a nuisance and it was difficult to maintain uh, those uh, buildings. Now to sum up, what I have been able to show you is uh, a proof of concept for fertility inhibition in uh, female dog. Uh, now what are the constraints we face and uh, which one has to resolve is that uh, we do not, uh, we, how we carry out large scale trials in captive, non descript dog or field trial. That's one of the uh, uh, constraints we are facing that how one will like to do. And now, when I have superannuated, I think I, I, I am now out of place. Someone has to take up this. But, second problem which I feel in India is that, that very few scientists from academia are interested in this field. Other stakeholders, such as those from the Forest Department and Ministry of Environment, are not updated with technology, at least in India is concerned. They are aware of, but then somehow they do not have guts to move ahead. I remember that in Delhi, we, I received a couple of phone calls, even there was a case going on in High Court. But they do give, they pass on some statement, the news item comes, after that nothing happens. Uh, so from Indian perspective, the commercial vaccine, which are currently based, whether it is post sign ZP or GNRH, they are not licensed for the species in which we are interested in. Because India has a different problem as compared to for these vaccines are licensed. So even uh, last year, I received a call from uh, Punjab. They, they were very keen to control population of meal dying. It's creating a lot of problem in Punjab now. But then they could not import the post science GP vaccine because they, they are not licensed to control population of these guys. So that, that's another problem. So the, the, the nutshell, the bottom line is that we have to develop our own solutions ourselves. And the science is known. Science is established. One has to take initiative. The path may not be easy. As you see that even our path was not easy, but it is achievable. Today, I think we understand much more than what 
we understood when we started this whole program. So we are at a better off stage. So I think I will stop. These, these were the various students at different stages. This was my first PhD student. And then we had in, uh, both national and international collaboration and financial support. And thank you if I exceed in my time. Any any questions, anything you now want to know? Yes. Yeah, please. थोड़ा ऊंचा बोलना भैया माइक दे दो थोड़ा मेरे को कम सुनाई देता है yeah yeah i think it's a good question because uh, you know what they they do is that uh, they they do a lot of mapping they will select areas where there is a overpopulation of base squirrel and they will put the hoppers there there is a possibility that the red uh will will also come and eat if they are living in the same area there is another problem with your obey approach and that is why it may have to be properly defined and that's why in about 30 years back when one of the leading scientists who developed your obey for rabies and they were able to eradicate rabies in europe using oral bait or not permitted by government of india is that if someone else by mistake eat this oral base it will have a adverse consequence but if you look at the from the mathematical point of view you have 100 and you have one the probability of that will still be able to turn out but will uh, their size will be by the same they should be able to not to replicate cannot Design that bait in such a way that on this well bait, bait uh, will go and the right. But by and large, they do all these mapping experiment where there is an over overpopulation of bait squirrel, and they will do setting of these baits only in those areas. But non-specific consumption of bait is a major problem. Like for even for monkey, when we were thinking of, uh, we we dropped the whole idea because in monkey there is another problem. I you, you may be knowing because you are coming from the animal institute. In monkey, lion, and the, all these species, there is an alpha uh, male, and alpha male eat first. They do not allow the others to come, so they will eat first. Then the females will come and eat the leftover. so you never know when you put the bait some some place that they are eaten by the male where it is not going to be effective at all until it is a sperm based uh, contraceptive vaccine so you will waste quite a number of this that's again another important issue which we have to keep in mind yes any comment on the interesting process so my question is you know mention gp3 sperm and most of the species So how much difference in variety there are these species? Okay. And the second question is, if you are using primary uh, dose as a from native using the native GDP, why? How is the sample sample information and other species is? Hmm. Now uh, I think the sequence of uh, zona protein, various zona protein, is now available from large number of them. and they will show variations <clears throat> i will not remember exactly the percentage but give you like for example the human and non human primate the sequence all in the non human primate uh, monkey uh, the sequence uh, similarity i'm not talking about homology is about 94% but if you take for example mouse and uh, human it will be about 55 60% so the 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 sequence 
similarity or identity will vary depending upon which pair you are comparing okay so the next question comes what is sufficient how much similarity is sufficient in order to use a particular protein from one species for another that is the question which i try to address in some uh, example that like our porcine did not work in canine and there are a couple of other papers where they have shown that the porcine gonad protein which works beautifully in the horses work in the deers elephant has not given very promising results in the dogs as well as cats we still do not understand that of course the similarity between porcine and cat will be of the order of 65 67 but with the same similarity it may work in another species so we it depends on what kind of epitopes are exposed in the native protein and so on so forth and how those native uh, epitopes are important for this from egg interaction or even for the process of polyphenol which varies from a species to species like in dogs i think within one follicle there are more than one oocyte it's a multi oocyte available uh, present in the single follicle whereas in the mouse it is one follicle per one oocyte per follicle so what was is that uh, and what was the second is, i think it answer both are Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> the native PGT vaccine is not conjugated with anything, and they, most of these uh, vaccines which are commercially available, they use a very strong adjuvant, which is oil adjuvant, complete fine adjuvant. We cannot use complete fine adjuvant in dogs, so it leads to the formation of granuloma. and they have modified the adjuvant it, it is known as adjuvant which is basically a diluted version of jones disease vaccine which is supplemented with killed mycobacteria and it is oil based now when you immunize with the native uh, porcine say for example horses uh, which we did the experiment in this case they will generate antibody against porcine so when you give the recombinant protein will just simulate the antibody they will act as a booster we purposely to generate higher antibody response started putting the t cell epitope to provide more t cell and so that you can generate much higher antibody okay and then we were having the concept we, i we, i believed in the concept i do not know how for that is true that the rest immunization with the same species may have better efficacy and that is why we use canine for canine yes So, like for example, you said the porcine was not very good for, you know, eliminating the uh, the fertility or reducing the fertility in dogs. So I was just wondering if you know if you have a species like for example, nobody works with the bovine DPT as it seems to me that you do not take like for example you are targeting a lead guy population control. Would it be a good idea to have a DPT recombinant protein of bovine origin? you know root uh, for uh, you know for uh, antigen or immunization or whether for cat canine specifics would have been better for dogs and cats i'm just curious you know yeah yeah i, I think uh, you, uh, <coughs> it's a it's a logical question if one wants to initiate any experiment with neil guy they will uh, logically ask that whether i should use the neil guy gp or i should use the porcine gp my answer to be to will be that if you do not have problem with securing the animals side both you never know which one will work 
the advantage with porcine you may get is that you perhaps may get much higher antibody response and for a longer period. Whereas with the real guys or GP, you may not get very high response and for a longer duration. It is possible that when the porcine has worked in horses, it has worked in white-tailed deer, it has worked in African elephant, it has worked in donkey, it may work in eel guy. But some species it doesn't work, and we still do not understand that. So the best, the safest thing is try both. At least in the first experiment, in five, six animals per group, test both and see yourself that which one works better. Like even when, in spite of showing the uh, the post sign did not work in a dog, I may say say that if any new person wants to do that, repeat that experiment. Because after all, we have done experiment in four animals, and it has been done at a third party source. And, and uh, we, of course, you are doing a random segregation of the animals. You know, they procure. Uh, I think we bought them sixteen females. All or another group which are not presented there for simplicity purposes. So you are doing randomizations during the uh, making the group, but you never know by chance there can be still some, uh, some biasness comes, and that if you have something like 20 animals, then you can draw more meaningful conclusion. But to do 20, even for this, we spend about few lakhs of rupees you know, to do this simple experiment. So my question, most of the cases uh, your side and the alone are combined separately scaling by the formula. So have you uh, thought about having kind of GPC and four of fine good and I think we did a lot of those experiments in mice and uh, rabbits, uh, where we have, uh, and this was done when we were uh, doing experiments from the human perspective, where we have mapped the B cell epitope using monoclonal antibodies that what epitope these recognize, and these antibodies were bioeffective in the sense they were inhibiting sperm egg binding, and then we stitched together these different epitope of GP3, GP4, GP1. And those experiments we have done. In fact, we have done also the experiments where you can combine the GP3 with sperm antigen. Somehow they did not give us the results, that desirable results which we were looking at. They were also giving uh, the kind of infertility which is in the range of 60, 70 percent. So it did not it did not lead to increase in the uh, uh, you know inhibition of fertility. And one of, another interesting experiment I can uh, share with you when we published some of our monoclonal antibody paper, and we showed this monoclonal antibody inhibit human sperm egg binding, then people ask this question, the same question: Have you done experiments? You do have antibodies against uh, the four. Uh, at that time, we had against three, and the fourth one was made against later on. That if you combine the monoclonal antibodies against all the three recombinant proteins, will they in lead to a significant increase in the inhibition of sperm egg binding as compared to using sing uh, one monoclonal alone? We did those experiments. Somehow, we did not find that. And the logic there was is perhaps a steric hindrance. You know, of course, the antibody is a big molecule, and my logic is that perhaps there may be some degree of steric hindrance. We find is some increase, but it's not significant. When you do statistical calculation, you do not find any. But all these experiments have been done. These experiments are published. Uh, you can look at it. Our uh, uh, sperm egg protein zona GP1, GP2, GP3 together. All these were made in a recombinant form. They were done. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. It was a very nice talk. I would just have a few things that you wish to be shown 
It's all available. All available. You just go to Deep Bank. I think one or the other guy must have to. Yes. <laughs> It is possible that 10% of the animals will already have ovulated just before you gave the vaccine. In those animals, it will not act as a protective agent, so it will need time for the antibodies to generate. So those animals will become pregnant. There is no problem. There is no doubt about that. Because you know, look, look from this whole report is from the population control measure. It is not meant for the individual animal inhibition of fertility. And that is why I said that in humans, so Dr. Tarwar is still continuing with a recombinant approach. They are trying to do clinical trial in two hospitals. And we are still having problem with uh, some side reactions at the injection site. Uh, but even if one resolves those, I, I have my own doubt. But population management perspective, and this population management perspective also, you will not see an immediate effect. You will see five years down the lane, 10 years down the lane. So many people, uh, in the forest department people in the United States, or those, those landowners, the public, they, they start planning it before time. Like hippopotamus, I gave you example in Colombia. There are both reactions from both sides. Public says, no, no, it's a tourist attraction. Hotel industry will not allow. For them, the tour tourists are coming just to see hippopotamus. But the land forest area, the other uh, development uh, municipal corporation, they say, no, we want to control their population. They are breaking down the ecology of the river, that famous river which uh, flows through the economy. Peninsula. So, <clears throat> The uh, uh, South Africa example I gave you, that they did all this uh, uh, elephant translocation. They did translocation in a massive way in three major areas, but it did not work. So now what they do is that in elephant, in fact, they give, sometimes they give uh, dart injections using helicopter. And over the years, they feel that within the next five years, they will be able to sustain, say, if there is a forest, which is about 500 acres or 1,000 acres, it can only sustain about 50 elephants, but not 200 or 250. They want to bring down that population to 50. 
so that it does not break down the ecology of that. Uh, let the other animals also survive. And that is their plan. And in that approach, I think this will be good. Like, for example, uh, speed dogs. The speed dogs, if you start give, you, there are two types of breeding speed, you know, for speed dogs. And yes. and they, go for, they come into heat and then they do random breeding. During those two days, you, if any dog give injections, doesn't matter if, if it is repeated, you can put also tag now on. And do uh, twice in a year. Up five years down the lane, you will see that their population will go, will go down. Because they will, at least 80% of them will not deliver reproductive life cycle से सात साल का भी है तो छह सात साल में आपने उसको कंट्रोल कर लिया तो साइकल अपने आप ही डिस्टर्ब हो जाएगा उसके बाद फैक्ट नजर आना शुरू हो जाएगा और आपको ये जसोला का एग्जांपल दूंगा एक महीने का पता नहीं फूड का तुमने देखा कहीं पे इट गोज इनटू लैक the, the the municipal corporation spent lakhs of rupees to feed those animals which were shifted at Jasola isolated place. If you give this vaccine to people, what do you do now? You do it, 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 you do अब तो उसको अभी तो रेडिस का कंस्टेंट हुआ नहीं है राजस्थान में पूरा प्रोग्राम चला है राजस्थान स्टेट में इनफैक्ट ये ह्यूमन सोसाइटी ने इसको स्पॉन्सर किया और सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट पुणे भी इन्वॉल्व है उसमें उन्होंने उन्होंने अपनी वैन चलाई हैं जहां पे वो पकड़ते हैं फिर स्टेरिलाइज करते हैं और फिर लेबल वैक्सीन देते हैं लेबल वैक्सीन फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट दे रहा है और बाकी सर्जिकल स्टेरिलाइजेशन का प्रोटोकॉल दे रहा है उन्होंने लोगों को अभी इतने रिजल्ट अच्छे नहीं आ रहे हैं हालांकि इसको स्टार्ट हुए हुए चार एक साल हो गए हैं चार या पांच साल हो गए तो ये उसको सर्जिकल ना मैं ये नहीं कह रहा कि सर्जिकल सेलाइजेशन को बंद करो उसको भी कंटिन्यू करो इसको भी साथ करने की कोशिश करो लेकिन अब तो ये हाई पॉप भी कह रहा है कि करो इम्यूनो सेलाइजेशन फर्टिलिटी वाला लेकिन वो आप ब्ली नहीं करोगे डब्ल्यू को हमने बहुत बड़ा ग्रांट किया और मैं उसमें इन्वॉल्व था और उसके बाद उन्होंने अखबारों में छाप दिया कि हम करने जा रहे हैं मंकी में एन के साथ एन कहीं पे कॉलोबरेटर नहीं उनके साथ और हाई कोर्ट में कहीं पे भाई तुम मैं कह मैंने जैसा साल को कहा मैं तो रिटायर हो चुका हूँ एन के पास एक पैसा नहीं है एक रुपया नहीं है ना एन को पैसा लिया है हमने सिंपल एज ए एडवाइजर करके उनको प्रोजेक्ट बनाने के लिए हेल्प की और प्रोजेक्ट गवर्नमेंट ने दे भी दिया हमको पचास लाख का एक रोड दिया उनको जो भी दिया पता नहीं क्या हुआ है वहां पे उसका एक पेपर नहीं है पबलैंड में देखता हूँ एक भी पेपर नहीं है वहां पे वो आईसीआर का उस समय मिनिस्टर साहब थे उनका उनके उन्होंने वो कई होंगे साउथ अफ्रीका या इधर उधर टू थे उन्होंने मेरा नाम सुन लिया उन्होंने कहा जी वहां पे आपके ये एक्सपर्ट है उन्होंने मुझे बुलाया उनके ऑफिस में मैंने प्रेजेंटेशन दिया वो सच ए नाइस पर्सन वो महाराष्ट्र से उनकी फिर डेथ हो गई जल्दी उसके बाद फिर कोई और आए और वो सारे गल्यूट हो गए सब तो ये एक इशू है लेकिन अब इशू के लिए इसको ना कोई ग्रुप को लेना चाहिए इसको एक मिशन मोड में या एक एनजीओ बना के लो या आप एक सेक्शन ट्वेंटी उस समय मैंने अमूल्य उगा एक सेक्शन ट्वेंटी फाइव की कंपनी बना लो एन आई इसको उससे ले लो वो उस पर ही माने सब लोग अपने हिसाब से चलते हैं तो चलते हैं भैया हमने जितना करना था कर दिया उससे आगे कोई ले जा सकता तो ले जाएंगे जिसको क्या करें बट उसमें मुझे दम लगता है कुछ आगे ले जाना चाहे कोई ले जा सकता है अब तनुवास को फेज टू भी दे दिया उन्होंने फॉर डीबीटी सेंक्शन एनी अमाउंट 
बट वो फेज टू में उसने कहा जी हमें हम करेंगे वहां पे कोई रमना वो तो रमन तो रिटायर हो गया वो दूसरे आए हैं कोई एक असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर है हाँ ऐसे ही कुछ काम है मुझे पूरा ईमेल पर है मैंने कहा जरूर करिए हम मैंने राजेश से बात की भाई राजेश जी मैं क्या करूं ये करना चाहते हैं डीवीटी पैसे दें कहते आप लोन ट्रांसफर कर दो प्रोटीन वोटीन एन आई नहीं बनाएगा हमने कहा ठीक है मुझे साइन करके वो दे दिया उसको बात को छह महीने से ऊपर हो गया आते अभी तक वो क्लोन लेने नहीं आया तो मुझे पता नहीं कितना कर पाएंगे पता नहीं क्या है तो प्रायोरिटी डिफरेंस तो शुरू में ही क्यों आए पहले तो मैं ये कह रहा हूँ हाँ वही मैं कह रहा हूँ बिल्कुल वही एक यंग किसी साइंटिस्ट को करना चाहिए और उसको इंस्टीट्यूट से सपोर्ट मिलनी चाहिए उन्होंने इसको टॉप प्रियोरिटी प्रोजेक्ट रखा जब हमने फाइनल ये फेज वन बंद हुआ जो इन्होंने कैनाइन हेल्थ पे एक प्रोजेक्ट अप्रूव किया था तो अब भी होंगे रहे वो डॉक्टर बतरा रहे बीच में फिर कुछ और कोई जना रहा अब मुझे पता नहीं डॉक्टर बतरा कैनाइन हेल्थ पे डॉक्टर एस आर राव ने बनाया था इस प्रोग्राम और वो अभी भी शायद कंटिन्यू कर रहा है हाँ अमृत इसको रखा और फिर फिर उन्हें फेज वन में तानुवाद को रखा अब उसको रखा हुआ तनुवाद से वो दोनों रिटायर हो गए दिनाकर भी चला गया और रमन भी चला गया हाँ वो यूनिवर्सिटी में बी सी वगैरह बन गया किसी में कौन दिनाकर अच्छा अच्छा अब अच्छा अब और कुछ हो गया मेरे को तीन चार साल से बात हो गई उसने काफी ले गया था वो प्लेटफॉर्म जो टी आर बी पी प्लेटफॉर्म बनाया था कितना ऊपर ले गया था उसको अच्छा गया था काम देखो ओरल बेट में बन सकता है इसका सिस्टम भी बन सकता है लेकिन इसमें यह जो आपको म्यूनिसपल कॉरपोरेशन है उनको साथ लेके चलना पड़ेगा पब्लिक को साथ लेके चलना पड़ेगा आप हमेशा एक एक चीज बना सकते हैं कंट्रोल फीडिंग प्ले, प्लेसेस बना सकते हैं जहाँ पे आप खुद उनको दो स्टॉक आए और बाकी जो नई यूज हुई है उनको उठा के ले जाओ वहां पर मेन जो कंसर्न हुआ था ये जो थी कॉप्रोस्की नाम था उनका जिन्होंने ये बनाई थी उन्होंने उस समय अप्रोच किया था गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया को और गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने ये कहा जी हम ये कर तो लें आप तो ओरल बेट तो वहाँ हेलीकॉप्टर से स्प्रे कर देते हो यूके फॉरेस्ट में और फॉक्सेस खाती हैं रेबीज वॉक्सिंग रेबीज की बेट कोई और भी खा लेगी तो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा लेकिन ये इनपर्चुनिटी कि हमारे गरीब बच्चों ने खाली उठा के तो हम क्या करेंगे तो वो दिया ही नहीं उनको कमी ही रोट मी अगेन या कुछ हेल्प कर सकते हो तो अब हम तो उस समय स्टार्ट ही किया था हमारी कौन सुन रहा है वहां पे <laughs> हमने अपने तलवार साहब को दी जाके और यार छठ तो इसको कर लेगा आपने आप ठीक है ये ये बात है लेकिन ओरल बेट इज ए गुड आइडिया वहां पे अल्फा ओमेगा वगैरह का कोई सिस्टम नहीं है और मैं तो ये कहता हूँ कि अगर ऐसे ये वैक्सीन बनी है दोनों अगर अभी हमने मेल में टेस्ट नहीं किया जेनर से ये मेल में भी काम करती है आप मेल आए फीमेल आए दोनों को देते जाओ कोई डिस्टिंक्शन ही नहीं और साइंस भी मूव की है ऐसी बात नहीं है आप तो और एक दो नहीं आई हैं जो आगे फर्टिलाइजेशन पे नहीं काम करती आपको शायद मालूम होगा जूनो प्रोटीन एक आइडेंटिफाई हुई है एक जूमो हुई है जूमो फॉर्म से है जूनो ये है एग मेम्रेन के ऊपर अब इन दोनों का आ, मिलना बहुत जरूरी है और नाउ दे आर कंसीडर्ड टू बी एस प्राइमरी इंटरेक्टिंग प्रोटीन ऑन स्पॉम मेम्ब्रेन एंड एग मेम्ब्रेन जब स्पॉम मैट्रिक्स से निकल के प्री वाइटन स्पेस में पहुंच गया उसके बाद ये रिकॉग्निशन बहुत जरूरी है उन्होंने आपके दोनों नॉकडाउन बनाए और जूमो नॉकडाउन है हंड्रेड परसेंट हंड्रेड 
और अभी किसी ने शायद एक्टिव इम्यूनाइजेशन अप्रोच भी कोई यूज कर रहा है ग्रुप जूनियन डी लगा हुआ अभी लेकिन कम आते हैं अपने तो साल में दो साल में एक आते हैं <coughs> वो बेसिकली इसके ओवेस्टेसिन पे ज्यादा चला गया है और कॉर्टिकल रिएक्शन और ओवेस्टेसिन कौन तो जूनियन डीन है अभी ग्रुप है उसमें अब कम करता है काम अब काफी एटी साल का हो गया थैंक यू थैंक यू yeah so thank you so much sir uh, once again for gracing this occasion uh, so uh, thank you all uh, for being here uh, so we have some snacks and tea arranged uh, outside the auditorium thank you once again thank you.